Hello everyone, this is Tarek Beba, a medical student from King Saud bin Abdelaziz University for Health Sciences. In this video, I'm going to talk about viral hepatitis. These are my objectives. I'm going to talk about the definition types, the differences between the virus that can cause hepatitis, and mainly I'm going to focus about hepatitis B. Now, what is hepatitis? Basically, it's inflammation of the liver leading to injury and necrosis. Uh, it can be divided into acute and chronic uh, according to the duration, more than six months considered as a chronic infection. Now, here we have the causes of chronic and acute uh, hepatitis. Uh, for the chronic um, hepatitis, we have viral infection, alcohol, autoimmune, and metabolic syndrome. For metabolic syndrome, mainly we have hemochromatosis and Wilson disease. And for acute uh, hepatitis, we have viral infection, drugs like isoniazide and methyl dopa. Also, we have alcohol. Now, here we have the course of the disease of acute hepatitis. First, it's going to start with degenerative changes, basically because of the immune response against the hepatocytes. Then we will have necrosis of the cell. Eventually, the cell will be removed by the immune system. For the chronic viral hepatitis, usually there will be infiltration in the portal tract with lymphocytes and plasma cell, and there will be liver changes that, like necrosis, apoptosis, and fibrosis. Here are the main changes between the chronic and acute hepatitis. Now we have other type of hepatitis, which is the fulminant hepatitis. It's a severe form of reactivation of acute or chronic hepatitis. Usually it, it ends up with the fail, uh, hepatic failure within two to three weeks. And usually it is complicated with hepatic encephalopathy and there will be massive necrosis. Now let's talk about the viruses that can cause hepatitis. Mainly we have A, B, C, D, and E. Now keep in mind that we have other viruses that can cause hepatitis, which are Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, and herpes simplex virus. Now I'm going to talk about these viruses in pairs so we can make a small comparison between them. Now I'm going to start with hepatitis A and hepatitis E. For the similarity, they are both RNA virus, single strand. They are both non-enveloped, and the mode of transmission is fecal oral route, so it's mainly concerned with the hygiene and they both can cause only acute infection. Now for hepatitis A, it's from the coronavirus family, and for hepatitis E, it's from the herpes virus. Now I want to mention something about hepatitis E, that it can lead to um, fulminant hepatitis with pregnant ladies. So you, you have to keep this in mind. Now between hepatitis B and hepatitis C. For hepatitis B, it's the only virus, the DNA virus that can cause hepatitis, it is a single strand and it is the smallest DNA virus. Now, uh, for hepatitis C, it's RNA virus and it is single strand. Both of them are enveloped and for the mode of transmission, they have similar route. So, uh, they can transmit through blood, body fluid or vertical from the mom to her baby. Now, uh, for the fluid or for the sexual activity, it goes more with hepatitis B. And for the uh, needle prick or IV drug use or blood, infect, uh, blood contamination is with hepatitis C. And both of them can cause acute and chronic infection. Now with the hepatocellular carcinoma, you have to remember that 80% of hepatocellular carcinoma patients are infected with hepatitis B virus. So it's more, more common with hepatitis B rather than hepatitis C. For the last one, hepatitis D, it's an RNA virus. The most important thing about it that it needs hepatitis B service antigen in order to infect and replicate in the host cell. It is enveloped from the Delta fam uh, virus family. It can lead to acute and chronic infection and it can lead to a hepatocellular carcinoma. Now let's talk about the serological markers. So we have two main types of markers. We have the antigen and we have the antibody. So here we have the uh, virus structure. First we have the envelope here. And then we have the core. In the envelope, we have the service protein, which give us the service antigen. And then on the envelope, we have two types of proteins. Uh, we have the core protein and we have the A protein. Now, the importance of A protein that when it is present in the blood, that means that we have the virus is actively replicating. And for the antibody, we have them accordingly to the antigens. Now here we have this table just to give us a summary about the viruses that can cause hepatitis. The main thing I want you to know here is the incubation period, the mode of transmission, 
and the treatment and prevention. Now, for the for the treatment, hepatitis A and E they are self limited disease, and for hepatitis B and C they are treated with interferon alpha. And in order to uh, manage hepatitis uh, D, you have to manage hepatitis B. For the viruses that have a vaccine, only hepatitis A and hepatitis B. And for the uh, incubation period, the longest one is hepatitis B. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis of hepatitis B. So here we have the virus. In order for the virus to enter the cell, it has to contain two service proteins, which are the pre-S1 and pre-S2. Now these are just basically service protein that aided the entry of the virus. Then when the virus enters the cell, it will start using the uh, host cell enzyme in order to replicate. Uh, the infected hepatocytes will be uh, recognized by CD8 T cell uh, through the MHC class 1 receptor. Now in order for the cytotoxic cell to eliminate the virus, it has to, to damage the hepatocytes as well. So we will have release of the liver enzyme such as AST and ALT as well. Now the, 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 the immune system will start to recognize that there is a damage to the uh, hepatocytes. Then it will send other type of cell which is the CD4 T cell, uh, the regulatory one. They will suppress the, hepat the cytotoxic T cell in order to preserve the hepatocytes. Then, when this develops, the patient will have a chronic infection, and this is basically what I have said in the previous slide. Now, here we have a chart, a chart that gives us the uh, titer versus the time, just the amount of the antigen and the antibody in the blood. So, for the beginning, we have the um, the, the patient is infected with the virus. The, fir the first thing that start uh, that's gonna appear in the blood is hepatitis B, uh, B service antigen. Then we will have the core antigen as well. And the first mechanism of uh, defense against these uh, antigens is the hepatitis B core antigen. Now, depending on the type of infection, if it's acute or chronic, we will have IgM for uh, acute and IgG for chronic. Now, later on, we will have hepatitis B uh, E antibody and hepatitis B service antibody. Now, for chronic hepatitis, we will have two phases, the replicative phase and the integrated phase. For the replicative phase, it's mainly concerned with the um, replication of the virus and inflammation of the liver. And this phase is highly infectious. And for the integrated phase, the virus will insert its genome within the host genome, and this phase is less infectious. This slide will just give you a summary of the course of the disease. Now, let's talk about the signs and symptoms. Remember that the uh, acute viral hepatitis, 70% of the patient are asymptomatics. And the rest may have flu-like symptoms because of the complement system. Um, they might have fatigability, arthralgia with or without arthritis. They might experience some anorexia, fullness, nausea, and vomiting. Also, there will be increase in the liver enzyme, again, because of the damage to hepatocytes. For chronic hepatitis, if cirrhosis develops, they will have jaundice, ascites, and fatigue. Now, I want you to remember that 80% of hepatitis C patient and 10% of hepatitis B patient eventually they will develop chronic infection. Now, for the investigation, you have to ask for liver enzyme and serology. Now, for the liver enzyme, if we have both of them are increased, we have to look at the ratio between the AST and the ALT. Now, if we have the AST is more it's probably alcoholic induced hepatitis. If it's the opposite, it is anything else, including the viral hepatitis. Okay, and for chronic viral hepatitis, it, it is the same. We will ask for liver enzyme as and for the serology. Now let's look at the interpretation of the serology. Let's start with hepatitis A. So if we have IgM antibodies positive, this means we have acute infection. Whereas if we have IgG is the positive, this means that the, this patient is immunized because of previous infection or he has his immunization. For hepatitis C, if we have IgM is positive, uh, we have acute infection. And if we have IgG is positive, this means we have chronic infection. Um, for this, it goes the same for hepatitis B as well. Now, for hepatitis B interpretation, 
When can you say that we have active infection? Is when we have hepatitis B service antigen, anti-hepatitis core, and anti-hepatitis service are all positive. So we can say that we have active infection. And to determine if it's acute or chronic, again, we have to look at the uh, anti-hepatitis score IgM or IgG. This will give us if it's acute or uh, chronic. Now for the management, usually acute hepatitis B is supportive, which means that we give antipyretic if there is fever, uh, analgesia, if there is pain, and so on and so forth. For the chronic hepatitis B, usually it's treated with interferon alpha because of antiviral and immunomodulatory properties. And this is the potential outcome of hepatitis B in adult. So the complication, maybe we'll have chronic infection, maybe the patient will develop cirrhosis and then hepatic failure or hepatocellular carcinoma. And again, remember that 80% of hepatocellular carcinoma patients are hepatitis B patient. Now remember, uh, hepatitis A and E, they are the only virus that can cause only acute hepatitis. And for hepatitis E, it can cause fulminant hepatitis with pregnant women. Now for hepatitis B, C, and D, they can cause acute and chronic. And for hepatitis D, it needs the uh, hepatitis B service antigen in order to, uh, to infect and replicate inside the host cell. Here are my references. And if you have any questions and comments, you can contact this email. And thank you for listening.